Thank you so much. I'm pleased to be here and I'll go to the subject. I prepare a little agenda to help us go through the subject. And it's about the mere and the failure of have a consumer good product under CC license that I trust everybody knows exactly how it works, the license, but uh, I haven't seen a product in the supermarket is on this license, so we try to run it and this speech will go like this. I'll show one chart about my background and there will be three, four charts about what has MATE to do with uh, open source sharing community and about the story of MetaMATE. And then comes the real subject, the history of MIR. That was not something planned. That's why first a little bit about uh, MetaMATE and then how MIR happened, its challenges. And there is the problems of the license that will go a little in deep. But there is a problem of a new product uh, with a new distribution concept, uh, with a new decentral management, and that's not only the license, so I'll try to separate. In, I have to be sitting here to be clicking. In case someone has a question that's regarding the language, or the, the, if it's not understood, you can raise your hand. Otherwise, we'll have time on the end. I have uh, extra slides if some new questions arise. So about myself, I grew up in South Brazil. I studied business management and applied to an international traineeship. Was chosen from Bayersdorf in Hamburg and I got to know that two weeks before I came to Germany. In the first uh, six weeks, seven weeks, I made some ideas and in six months, the first patent. Why I'm telling that about Bayersdorf is because in five years, I could register five patents, includes for these TESA power strips, I have four patents on them. And at that time, I had to deal with lawyers, a team of lawyers fighting 3M on the patent bottle file. So there was an experience of dealing with copyrights and developing technology that we will come back after. I also did the website for them and point of information, so I was already interested in in the new way of communication. That was in 94. And then I quit and I traveled 10 years. The pictures that are quite small in between of the rainbow but show a kind of nomadic style and I traveled most in India and in remote areas in Brazil or in the Pakistan war line doing digital inclusion and therapy for different able children. It was a kind of a sabbatical, 10 years traveling non-stop the boy with the longer hair on your left is my son, and my kids travel like it's 10 years going to different uh, experiences. So much about myself, but in that travel, I went with the family to make mate in Brazil and research the mythology behind the mate, what's the story, the indigenous story of it, and create a theater play where we travel to Germany, Lebanon, India, showing the myth behind the mate. And when I came back to Germany then, I should decide what I would do. And that was the start of Metamate then. I decided to occupy myself uh, with something that has to do with my culture. I was born in the area where the mate tree grows. Most have maybe seen a picture of a mate tree, or a tree plantains are this side, are bushes holding monoculture. 90% of the mate in Argentina, maybe more, is monoculture belonging to three families. So it's a kind of extreme monoculture production. While in Brazil, you have 80% of the forest, you have trees that are so wide, 20, 25 meters high, on the shade of higher trees. So it's a fully different quality. And I was astounded with 35 years old, the first time to see what is a mate tree and what it's to make a mate by hand. So a little about the story of the mate, it's drinking this original uh, calabasi by the indigenous. No, this is not the original, that's a Chinese product. But there they drink around the fire where they have the food. The material is shared in the tribe. They do not have the concept of property. Everything that's cut into the tribe is shared equally. They do not have the concept of hierarchy. Everyone is in the same level. 
And in that place where they share the material, they share the immaterial, the knowledge. And there is where the matter circulates, fostering this kind of communication. So it's a very beautiful, I see, thing that nowadays we love the club mate and to drink different kinds of mate to fool our concentration or our capacity of communicate. And that comes from a very old spirit of mate, of sharing. And when I came to Berlin, that was one of the happy things in 2010 to meet the pirate party there and see the people drink different mates. And it was also for me a kind of a hey, nice feeling to be along it, and that's the picture down there is in the Abgeordnete the House in the City Council in Berlin in a meeting where we have the different matters getting together. So, first thing I did coming from marketing, went to a boy to university in Berlin, food engineering, and we try all kinds of raw material and matter to know what is the theobromine, caffeine, antioxidant level. So I did some deep research on that. I will not go deeper on it. We studied different uh, limonades, what they are offering, and that's just an example here, and we make a recipe for kind of a 30 different extractors of mate with different juices. So we are ready to launch a, a drink. We were ready to start to produce mate in a different way. So that's the path. And so this is a chart about the research, and we started then also a reforestation project in Brazil, transforming a monoculture of soja into a forest. I think that's still the first experiment in permaculture with mate, where you want to use a native wood to drive the mate from the forest, or from the permaculture. Nowadays, all the wood used to dry mate comes from the eucalyptus, and eucalyptus is a tremendous disaster in South America, what's changing the landscape, causing urban uh, exodus. The people from the countryside had to move into the city. 1,000 hectares of eucalyptus provide one job per year. It's only the big machine to cut, so it's, it's a kind of local disaster when you're trying to do something about it. Well, but when we are planning to do that, uh, and we were thinking about making the products in Berlin, like uh, more organic, self-made device to drink mate, a Belgian raw chocolate. We start to do something that we still do, that's a mate absinthe, done in Berlin and in Dresden. We did cosmetics and other little things, like uh, mate honey and different things, and there is, I can say even the a mate e-liquid that will be I have there if someone comes tonight, I think in the sea base we will have some tests. Am I talking right? And Simone de Bear is also there. And so that is one of the, in, we were creating many things. And then comes the history of Mir, what we want to talk here. It was this lucky moment that in our space, there was the pirate meetings preparing the campaign for 2011 in Berlin. And we had loads of fun and sometimes we have late evening, loads of beer and loads of mate. And one night, this fellow that there with me, Maltec, and I and others were drinking and saying, what's the perfect harbor? We needed to have beer, we need to have mate. And he joked, uh, let's call it Mir then. And we were in that environment, in that uh, cave there, and we just tweet out and say, who can make uh, a mate beer? And we got an answer, and two weeks later, we were in a brewery making it. And now I would like just to refresh the talk and show you a shortly video. When we did that, just making an advance, I'll show this chart here. It was not only a beer, because at the very beginning it was a pirate beer. And so we, we have to think differently. We decided, let's make a Creative Commons license. We put all the finances online. We made a pad where the people could discuss and see what to use the money from the little crowdfund we did. And there was a question how to discuss, how to decide the taste. And another friend at that time, uh, Morlang, said, why don't you do a QR code? And then, because there was this problem. If every person that votes give its name, you lose the anonymity of voting. 
And if you don't have a name, how can you control how many people are voting? So we did this little hack there that we put for every bottle has a single QR code. So we produce different QR codes and every bottle has a single entrance to a liquid democratic platform where people could judge the taste, what to do with the money, how much caffeine, how much alcohol. And that was done, developed during the time we were also doing the campaign. And what happened, it was launched really casually in the same time after the election in Berlin. It was the first meeting of the Pirate Party in Berlin after the election. And when we came with this, it was called the Mir, the Pirate Cave Beer, with this QR code, you would land in, if you click there, and this liquid democratic platform, and here it's something funny, you could choose if you want more or less gas, more or less mate, more or less smell, more or less color, more or less alcohol. And it was everything with emoticons, very easy to understand, so people were having fun judging it, but we also let it open for new questions. And that's what you see very down. Should we nationalize our banks? Or should we remove our troops from Afghanistan? So people start to discuss and use the platform while they were drinking beer to judge other things spontaneously. Well, we have a, then a big surprise because we showed there and one newspaper from Berlin made something about it. And sure, more people interested in open source, they started to talk about it. Uh, and some of the small things for tourists, but then the beer magazines refer to it, uh, and newspapers in Brazil refer to it, uh, and in little places in Germany, but I think all the Berlin big newspapers portrayed it, and we were not expected to it. It was a very strong uh, press echo in Germany, in, other places, and lots of us connected, I must say, in the beginning because of the pirate and beer, and beer with mate, so it got a very strong uh, call, and to give you a feeling of it, uh, oh, it went around. Uh, it looks like it's a hook, a loop here in the presentation, if I didn't do anything wrong. Da. Comes a video now. It is in a morning show in CDF. It's one of the main channels here. And I don't know if the sound is proper, so let's try it. It's in German, but I think you get a feeling of the place and the people. Ein neues Bier für den umtriebigen Hauptstädter Mia, eine Mischung aus Mate. Und Mate, die belebende Grünpflanze, wird gerne als Limo getrunken und jetzt mit Hopfen und Malz gemischt. Man wird nicht müde, müde, wenn man so lange feiern möchte, hat man eine gesunde Alternative, dass man bis zu Sonnenaufgang feiern kann. So sieht übrigens der original mate tee aus. In der hippen Bierversion gibt es einen Code, damit kann per Internet über den Geschmack abgestimmt werden. Mhm. Viel mehr mate geschmack sollte nicht sein, dann könnte man es nicht mehr so schnell trinken. Das hat mich beim ersten Mal total überrascht. Weil ich bin erst morgens um vier ins Bett gegangen, obwohl ich nur zwei Flaschen getrunken habe. Einzige Herausforderung, Etiketten kleben. Da hilft auch kein Grünzeugs. Yeah, so it was a very strong echo and what happened in the weeks after we start to get lots of orders and big plans and you got together and found a little company and we are all excited, where, where is it going on? What is happening? It was not planned, it was more a fun project. And so the key things was like a, a decentralized production and the advertiser would say, take a, a bottle back to your local brewer and create your own. Adjust the taste according to local wishes. To be very blunt, I would say, imagine that the McDonald's in each city would offer different food according to the taste of the people. No standard, but we share a brand. We share a spirit and a way of doing business. So we started to create the recipes and put them online. At the same time, it happened the Biennale of Art in Berlin. We were invited to do a bar of a liquid democracy in the Occupy camp. And it was again 
very fun thing to make new labels, to stick it, to make a new taste for them. And people were sticking the labels on the bottles there. And then we create a speaker corner to have a liquid democracy. So it was a mixture also of a art project. But then things changed. This gentleman there, this late person uh, from Hamburg, he has a company who buy license from beer. And he come to visit us. He make an appointment and came. And now I'm changing the story to say what is CC license, what is the challenge of Mir, and also what went wrong. So it's in a flowing presentation. I'll be telling success stories mixed with failures. So this man has been working in the beer forever, beer field. He has uh, some distributor, and he buy license and let it produce. And a quite very nice guy, so he came and wanted to make it, and we agreed and everything. And we sold the mat for him, for that, and he sent to a brewery in Belgium to make it. And when the beer came in the Berliner Beer Mile, the International Festival of Beer, we opened it, and we were very surprised. That's not the taste, it's not the recipe. Took some months to clarify it, and the brew will give, tell it's really, it should be a wheat beer, a kind of Belgian beer, very fine, it can change. But he used one third of the matter of the recipe, but they didn't inform us to change the label, because there was content of caffeine, theobromine on it. And that is a kind of a first example of a brewer economy or brewer mentality that did not understand easily what is CC license. Because they are used to work with a license, I will show you one. That's what I got to sign, and I was very surprised, it was so funny, I make an extract here. The contract that was meant to be, we allow only this brewer to produce from that day on. Exclusivity. So we just cut the only, sign and send. You can produce it, but there is no exclusivity. And so that was a kind of a, up to the latest day, the difficulty for the brewer industry to try to understand the product that everybody share. The ideas, the recipes, the way, the experience. So he wants to buy the recipe and the license, and from there on, he will be the only producer. But he understood that we want to do different ones, so we went ahead. I have to say here thanks for Premium Cola who gave us nice uh, advisement how to proceed. We found a brewer, a handler in South Germany, in Bayern, where they are famous for good beer, that, that wants to make a beer. And the handler was called Rab, the raven. And his brewer was also Raben. So if these two ravens together, we decide to make this little figure, you see there is a raven on top of the mirror. And that was the experience of a very nice traditional family of brewers. And again, a problem with the license. You cannot build beer in Germany having something else. There's a purity law. And this purity law next year is doing 500 years old. It's from 1516. So extra attention from that because this is taking very hard is playing with this license now. So we have to, we produce this beer, this beer, but you could not write that it was a real production. So the, although the recipe said Matt is brewed with beer, we have to write on the bottle and it was done like this. I don't say how it was produced, but it was written 80% beer, 20% Matt. It's a mixed drink. We were obliged to say that to not have a problem with the purity law. Uh, when I say thanks, I'd like us to say if someone has more interest in this drinking industry, if you're not from Germany, there is a book here called Hacker Browser that goes in depth on it, especially the premium cola. It's a collective that hacks economy through drinks. And so there is a deeper story and a deeper sense about trying to change economics by doing soft drinks in Germany. It's unique and the very special one is the premium cola that you should see later, but 
They help to start Flora Power, they help to start Litmate, and they help to start many others. And it's a kind of a spirit of open source that they experienced here. Also to say that the, this feeling of the hacker browser started also before with the Club Mate. They also doesn't do advertising, and it's also a nice family from South Germany. So now going deeper, what's happened to Mir? What went wrong? I will talk a little bit more of the license, but uh, I don't want to push to say it failed because of the license. It's fair to look at the product itself and see there was some things complicated. The product itself, this thing of each, each bottle be different. We have a wonderful places like in the sea base that you have sometimes two, even for a short time, three tastes of beer. And we have, I know people here sitting here that have been in the sea base and bought one strong mirror for himself and a weak mirror for his friend. So this plurality, this diversity in a sea base environment is fully okay and normal. But if you go to a normal drink shop, it's very difficult for them to understand that you have a new product that comes with different tastes from different places. That was one thing of the product. Another thing, the bottle. Uwe Luberman from Premium Cola say, to make a successful drink is more a science of buying the bottles than a science of the drink. It's a science in itself. In that case, the brewer in Germany could not brew the normal Club Mate bottle or the normal beer bottle. Only the big ones can do that. His machine would not do it. So he adapted a bottle that's exactly the same height and then the long one for half a liter, but it's zero three. So we got another bottle that would run in the machine to produce mir, and we introduced that. And what happened? I didn't know it. Every shop has a problem if you have a new bottle. It's a standard logistics. If you are selling a beer or a drink in a shop, he doesn't want to have a box only for this product. So there was this kind of difficulties also for a new product. If you don't know the market, you want to go ahead, it can come such mistakes. Other thing, lack of capital, not like Coca-Cola or Fritz Cola in Germany. We didn't do any kind of advertising. We did a kind of a speaker loan. That means the person would help to list me in a place would get a percentage of the sales. But we didn't come with mass marketing or pushing the product. And it's difficult. We went to the main clubs in Berlin where they do sell mate, where they do sell innovative products, but they ask 5,000 euros, or if not 20,000 euros per year, to get signing into it, to list your product. And that's not the way we want at all. Third thing, the purity law. That comes also nice, not only Germany, Brazil had it. At that time that everybody was talking to us about Mir, someone called me and said, hey, my mother saw you in the newspaper, how are you? And my brother is in love with beer, he wants to produce it. So this person invested 7,000 euros in Mir, and he wants to produce that in Brazil. I took the flight, I went there, we made the event to test the MIR. We made laboratory exams. We did like a liquid democratic platform for Brazil. We did two events where we tried different tastes and you choose what to produce. We went to the middle-sized brewery to let it be produced. The government didn't give the permission for us. That was the end of the story. I heard in between time that there was a kind of a experienced business person in Brazil who had a mate beer. And I have a phone call with him, and he told me, I have the patent on Mati beer. You cannot produce it. Having but some experience if you patent it, I know that you cannot patent Mati beer. You might have a chance to patent a procedure of making it, or a special way to make a taste, but not so generic. So I, I didn't care much about it. I went further for the registration of it. And I got to the government office to tell me, it's not possible. You cannot register a mate beer. You cannot mix it when you make a beer. And I asked how that person can do it. That was a mistake. He also should not do it. And that was a 
border in Brazil where you didn't come further. And similar then, uh, we have the, our small production always running in Berlin. And with the upcoming, maybe of the purity law anniversary, 500 years, or some other events, our brewer will request to make a special permission to brew mate beer. You can brew it, but you have to ask permission. And if you ask permission, you might have a special control on hygiene and other issues. So it took us months to find out why the, our brewer doesn't want to produce anymore. Sadly, we got to know first from his internship, his practicant. His internship told us we cannot produce it. And that was the story then that the CC license, open sharing, face a blockage. We cannot produce it decentral so easily as we thought. So that was a kind of a saying for me what I do then. I cannot be keeping fighting it. So I decided to go back to the core of my work that I like of Mate and not to do the crowdfunding for me because I was not looking for uh, possible that I could really turn this mass productive, this central production and something that would be also sustainable where I also could get something. I work one and a half year on it. And that was the time we were preparing for the football summer cup in Brazil there and we prepare a new label. We are ready to launch in Berlin, several, because it's a Brazilian beer. I'm from Brazil. There's loads of party happening. We thought, now we come with a mate beer. And it was forbidden, or it was not allowed to produce anymore. So, actual situation. We could not work for me. You see in this picture a kind of history. There is a couple of bottles coming from Brazil, from different breweries, from Belgium, from Bahia someone from Czech and so it was a nice beginning it made a little history and we keep getting in Berlin requests we get tourists and we get some uh, geeks and people come and ask in some hacker space or some university requested we have next week in the Saarland in South Germany a festival they ask 20 bucks cannot do anything about it and to go really large to let it produce is a decision I don't want to take a, a risk, in, let's say, of waste in my time now. The Mati story is more important. So Mia is history for now, but there is still some other things happening, some learnings. There was a nice brewery in Czech that they asked for the recipe, and they created their own label. They put another name, because I can understand Mia, for them, they are in Pilsen. Mir means peace in Russian, and they do not like very much Russian. I think they are forced to learn Russian in the school, so they don't want to have a product with a Russian name. I could understand they changed the name. They use another kind of erva mate. <laughs> so on the end, they change everything, and they write to me and say, I hope you don't have a problem with it. So from the original Mir recipe, the name, the recipe, the product, there was nothing else there. But they were very fair and concerned about us. And I hope there are other people doing something so they got inspired with it. And they write it there, you see in the label, CC by ANCSA30 by Metamate. So it's still a CC license stuff. It's really confusing then. But these people went further. We work with them now already two years long. It's a small, a small brewery. And they understood then. And they didn't like our label, so they made their own label. This is a beautiful butterfly with hop, with mate leaves, and we really love it. So when they understood that, we took that label and we apply in Berlin. That's the mere label down. And the people from the extreme hardware and software meet it, they like it, so they sponsor one batch of beer to promote it. And that's one example where Creative Commons and the product consumer good could work. Because we are kind of cross-pollinating each other, like one helping each other with new ideas. And 
And so that's a kind of a little success story that's really fun because they are going further. They have now three kinds of mirror. Each bottle is screen printed. And they are doing festival with fresh mate beer and they have the local production being sold locally in restaurants in Pilsen. And like this, we have one brewery in Santa Maria in South Brazil, one in Porto Alegre. And so there is a couple of people doing us, that's the next chart. There is a guy who sells beer ingredients in Brazil. So he's selling a kit to make your own beer. And it comes with erva mate inside, comes everything that you need to make 20 liters of beer. And even with the labels inside. So it's not fully died, it went in some strange ways, but it's not something that then it's able to sustain me or to make me worth to work on it and push this project. The very last chart on Mir, there is 10 brands of Mir, uh, Mati beer, not called Mir in Brazil now. I have nothing to do with any of them. There's 10 different mate beers in Brazil, and one of them makes advertising. It's from Anheuser Busch. It's called Ambave in Brazil. It's the new number one producer of beer in the United States as an advertising campaign in launching a mate beer in Brazil. That we can see is not really failed. It's survived in other hands. It's been used. I'd not say that's inspired on us, but it's a Belgian blonde ale with erva mate. That's kind of the product that we have done in Belgium for us. It's very summery, it's very nice. And the government of Brazil allowed it now. It looks like it's okay to do the mate beer. Well, from the failure we learn and the motivation stands, I went back to my work and don't panic, I'm doing now a 42 product that's a kind of uh, answer to the coffee. We are doing a mate called 23 that's organic certified, vacuum packed, is cheaper than any other mate in the market, and we are trying to infiltrate the mass market with it. Last week it was 3,500 kilos delivered in USA, and August come the first five pallets in Germany. We have uh, 18 shops distributed in Berlin and creating distribution. So out of the experience of Mir, we might uh, do different with the Mati. I don't know if I will do CC license. I would be very pleased if the question someone wants to talk about it. Or tomorrow in the Le Quadrature de Camp at 11 o'clock in the morning will be a Mati session about hacking business. And to see how the CC license now with more experience could be approached to other products. By that I finish. Uh, I'm sorry for the very ugly charts. I'm, I'm a math hacker, not a web presentation designer. So I'm sorry that they look very messy and huggy, uh, ugly. And I'll open for questions now. Okay, thank you so far, Fabrizio. Okay, so if um, any one of you here in the room has a question, please come to one of the room mics so everybody can hear you and please go ahead. When you were working on it, did you have a legal team or like a, like a lawyer involved? You mean when I was working before by Bayersdorf or in Mir? Uh, when you were working on Mir. Well, we knew some people from the new thinking from far away. I went to some events saying that by the CC license, we would not have a legal basis to fight for it. And the EHSM, I got some people who offered me to do re-engineering if someone uses our license, but I didn't have a legal base, uh, as, like a, a legal advisor. We have a lawyer that look uh, together what we are doing, but not a technical lawyer on patents. Well, just a basic question. Uh, why were you at so attached to call it a beer? Well, actually, it, it isn't a beer. It, it is, it's beer and mate. It's a special drink. So if, if you just refrain from calling it a kind of beer, then you're not bound to the uh, Reinheitsgebot. Um, if I understand it correctly, 
you're saying that if you are not called beer, you're not tied on the Reinheitsgebot. Is it correct? It's not that... Is it correct, the question? Yes, that, that's my question. It's not quite like that. If you give us an impression of beer first, mir or not beer, it applies the Reinheitsgebot. But even if I call that uh, Mate, or if I call that XYZ, it applies the uh, Brewery Association in Germany, request the brewer to register it and ask for a permission as a brewer to brew something else than beer. And that permission our brewer didn't want to apply. Because it seems that if you apply for that permission, you get an extra control. And the brewer association is kind of very tight together. So don't call, the, call it the brewer then? Yeah, don't go to the brewer. That, that would be a way. The brewer in South Germany, he was very good in the association, so he had no problem. He said, we'll call that a mixed drink, and they will not disturb me. There are other big brewers here that they told to me, we make beer for you, it's no problem. You have to do that at least 20 hectare, uh, hectoliters. You like make a big quantity, they will do. But I don't have the capital, the distribution to start doing 20, 30,000 liters. So to start as small is the problem. Okay, um, so for now, if there's no more questions for right now, um, another thank you to Fabrizio, thank you. Thank you.